Frappe Snowland is one of the four wonders of Mario Kart 64's flower car. Known not only for its Christmas Eve vibes, but also for its decade-old snow statues. And very, very annoying snowman. Ah, uh, well, anyway, welcome back to the second episode of the Mario Kart comparison series on the Mario Kart 64 tracks. Wait, ah, oh, that's better. Anyway, it's been a while since the last part, probably because of your attention for the first part wasn't that good. Uh, yes, that's the point of the day with Adabob parody, don't get mad at me for doing that. But annoying that, this video actually did really well. So now I'm very excited to tell you all the tragedy of the- Wait, I'm sorry. The tragedy of the Mario Kart 64 flower car. Here in this graveyard, we should be able to find our first course right here. That course in question is Toad's Turnpike. Once in a notoriously hard course is now a notoriously bad course. Let's see how this classic course could have fallen. Toad's Turnpike is one of the more generic Mario Kart courses. The track is a highway in the shape of a figure eight. Despite the simple look and generic layout, there's quite a few things to discuss about the original. As the name suggests, it's Toad's Course, and because of that, there's quite a few Toads scattered around the track. As well as a Nintendo sign being the one piece of advertisement in this course, because of course it is. Going to the rail, there's quite a few outcodes you can go in to get iron boxes if you're willing to sacrifice some time. But most notably in this course, there's a lot of cars trying to run you over. The vehicles that are capable of running you over are basic cars, trucks, and buses driven by Diddy Kong. Respect for Diddy Kong, he gets drafted from every Mario Kart game, because priorities, am I right? Of course these cars are supposed to make the track harder, but I mean it's a Mario Kart game. Surely this track isn't that hard, right? Right? Yeah, right? What, you want this course to be harder? Say hello to Toad's Turnpike on Mirror Mode, arguably the hardest Mario Kart track ever. In this version of the course, all the traffic is coming towards you, which makes the vehicles almost impossible to avoid. I don't know if it's the hardest course, I've only played this track like two times on Mirror Mode, and I failed to win either of those races, so it might be. But this is really why Toad's Turnpike is notorious. And now before we move on to the remake of this track, I just want to point out one other thing. The starting line is actually on a different lane to the rest of the track. Making this the only Mario Kart 64 track that you don't finish by going for the starting line. I'd imagine this would have been done to avoid you getting run over before the race starts, but it's still a cool perk this track has. So finally, let's move on to the remake. Toad's Turnpike reappears as the final track in Mario Kart 8 Shell Cup. And it's somewhat controversial. Anyway, let's start comparing these tracks by talking about the elephant in the room, the anti-gravity section. The anti-gravity in this track allows you to drive on the walls. Doing this will shower you with coins and boost panels, as well as item boxes. This is where a lot of the hatred for this track comes from, as a lot of people think this is broken and makes the track way too easy. I can definitely see that. I feel like the only reason you shouldn't use the anti-gravity if you're trying to take advantage of the trucks and cars. Which you can actually do in this version, as it's actually two cars that you can use strategically. You will see cars with surfboards on them that allow you to do a trick if you manage to get onto them. But by far the coolest addition to this track is the truck that you can drive onto to go onto a glider. Going into a glider will allow you to land on other buses that have trick ramps on them. A lot of the vehicles also have advertisements on them now, because Toad's a sellout now. The most notable advertisements is this one that promotes the game that you're currently playing, and this one that foreshadows the copy in Mario Odyssey. The outcoves on the road also return, but there's a lot less of them and they will give you coins instead of item boxes. There's also a lot of coins just following the other vehicles. By far the biggest change of this remake is the background. It's pretty much night and day, and I have no idea what a word is that will describe how drastic these changes are. But by using no clips to become she says, we can see this completely unique building, uh, this bridge, and these electricity towers all completely modelled. Almost 10 years after this game release, it still blows me away how good it looks. And finally, we can see that the music has changed quite a bit. Take a listen.
But yeah, that's Toad's Turnpike. I don't think it's as bad as people would say it is, but I do think it's kind of boring and maybe shouldn't have been in Mario Kart 8 to begin with. Okay, on to our next track, which is right here. That, of course, being frap. Wait, what is going on? Uh, why is it descending from the dead? Wait, did this track get re-erected by actually getting a good remake? Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's look at Frappe's No Land. As stated in the intro, Frappe's No Land is a snow course, with the main attraction being ice sculptures of Yoshi and Mario. Oh yeah, let's not forget about the really, really, really annoying snowmen, as they will spin you out if you touch them. There's also a cave-like area at the end of the course. This is overall a pretty basic course, but it does have quite a few off-road shortcuts. And also, uh, actually that's pretty much it. This is a really simple course. Well, now let's look at this track's downfall in Mario Kart DS. And this is actually one of my favorite retro tracks in this game. This track is in the Banana Cup, which is possibly... Actually, no, it is the worst cup in any Mario Kart game. Okay, Frappe Snowland might be the one saving grace of this cup, but it really doesn't matter because this cup sucks so much that it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. This cup not only has two really generic courses, but it has the worst track in the game. It's the last track of the cup. The Banana Cup feels like it lasts for hours, and it's the 30 plus worst cups of all time. Actually, getting to the track though, nothing has actually changed. Seriously, probably the biggest change in this version is that the snow has a different texture. The ice statue of Yoshi is also in 2D now, although I can't actually prove that it wasn't in 2D in the original. It is a lot more noticeable here though. Actually, a lot of things are much more noticeably 2D in this version. Mainly the trees and snowmen. Also, in true DS fashion, the music is incredibly crunched down. Take a listen. Frappe Snowland's most recent appearance is in Tua, and they've actually changed stuff this time. Like this starting line, which instead of using the basic Mario Kart 64 one, is made of wood. With the addition of the trick system, we have some been added to the off-road areas so that you can use the mushroom to get to. One of them actually puts you into a glider. One of the most noticeable things about this remake is that everything is now in 3D, which visually improves this course a lot. Mountains have also been added to the background, there's also Christmas trees in this footage, but that's just part of Mario Kart 2's Christmas tour, and I do that with every track around Christmas time. The final thing that the Mario Kart 2 version changes is this jump. In prior versions, you will jump over a stream of water and land on ice. Tua not only adds cracks to the ice that you're jumping off, but now you land on a wooden bridge. Those are the major changes that Tua brings. I still think it's sad that Frappe Snowland isn't in the booster course pass, but maybe that's a good thing judging by the other tracks in this cup because it is an N64 flower cup course that is in the booster course pass, and oh, did they ever stuff that up. Back at the graveyard, we have a track that got massacred so badly that you won't even find a gravestone for it here. What is it got massacred or somebody ate the gravestone? But anyway, next we have Choco Mountain. If it wasn't obvious by the title, this is indeed a track made of chocolate, I think. Actually, it's never been proven, so nobody really knows if it is. But I mean, it probably is because that's the only attraction that this course has. I'm not kidding. You start by driving between these mountains. Then you enter this cave that looks like a mouth, okay. Then you do more driving on the mountain with nothing interesting happening. Then you have to dodge some rocks made out of chocolate. Then there's some very insane bumps on the road. And oh well, the race is already finished and literally nothing happened. So yeah, this is a pretty bland course and nothing much interesting happens on it. Well, unless that happens. If you manage to fall off this cliff, then Lakitu will get vengeance on you for stealing his cloud all those times and not save you. And let me tell you, if this happens to you, then your race is pretty much over because there's no way that you're going to get a good position. I also want to point out how I was actually trying to do this on the second lap, but on the third lap it just happened to me by accident. 
So yeah, this is not a rare occurrence. And it's really annoying. You must need an insane lead to just have a chance of getting back from this. So yeah, this is a very bland track, so let's see what the other versions do to make this more interesting. MKDS was the first game to remaster this course, and despite the remake of Fair Base No Land having pretty much no changes, this course has less. The thing that everybody praises about this remake is that you no longer spin out when you hit the mountain, but I honestly never found that an issue in the original. In terms of visual changes, the chocolate rocks look rounder and better, and the Luigi sign at the end of the course now says Luigi GP. There's also some changes to the music, but we'll get to that later. But yeah, there's pretty much no changes to this version. And yes, that does still mean that you can fall off this cliff and screw yourself over. And you'll have to wait another 15 years for that feature to be fixed in the next version in 2R. And guess what, they've actually changed things. Like how they once again made the Mario Kart poster above the starting line made all wood. They also put torches and a ladder next to it. But probably the biggest change comes from the cave. Not only has the cave been greatly extended, but it's now been turned into a gold mine. The entrance is now surrounded by wood, and there's diamonds going out of the chocolate. Ah, uh, that's interesting, but it's not the only thing in this chocolate, as there's now dead trees and fish. That's disgusting. Who on the Mario Kart Tour team let this through? Well, I guess that confirms this is mud, not chocolate, for some reason. Anyway, you'll find some swoopers in this cave trying to spin you out, as well as a few off-road shortcuts so you can use a mushroom to get through. At the end of the cave, there's a ramp that puts you into a glider. And they also added the extra detail of you flying over some broken wood. Some areas that look like natural stones now look very man-made here. And finally, they blocked off the stupid cliff. Not that it really matters because Mario Kart 2 forced you to play on smart steering, but it's still a cool addition. They've also removed some of the mountains, leaving a void for you to fall into. And with that change, they've also added a background. So overall, this is a pretty good remake. But leave it to Mario Kart 8's Wave 1 DLC to stuff this up. Choco Mountain from Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I really don't like this course and I don't even know why. I mean it's pretty much the same as the tour version, but it did bring with it some differences, mainly visual, such as paracoopers and shy guys watching the race. The one other visual change is that these boulders are no longer made out of chocolate. Truly despicable. That's about it. This course does look awful because it's from Wave 1 as well. And also because it's from Wave 1, there's a lot of jank. Like seriously, look at this footage I got in 2022. And tell me that this is okay for the best selling game on Switch. The one other thing this version changes is the music. And let me tell you, this remix is awful. Take a listen. Graveyard Flower Cup sucks, Mario Race Race Remake is bad, we all get it now, let's go on with the comparison. The final cause of this cup is at this point somewhat nostalgic to me, that being Mario Raceway. Mario Raceway is the Mario circuit for Mario Kart 64. Probably my favourite thing about this course is the hilly atmosphere that surrounds the racetrack. The layout of the course itself is just okay. Noticeably, there are a few off-road shortcuts. Notably here, 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 and here. And at the end of the course, you go for a warp pipe. 
Although there is a lot of branding to Mario, like the hat on top of the grandstand and these signs, there are even more things related to the Piranha Plant, as they're scattered all over the course. They also went with the Super Mario World design, which makes sense as that would have been the newest mainline Mario game at the time of Mario Kart 64's development. There's also a mushroom around this corner, and that's about it. So let's finally talk about Mario Kart Wii. Like most of the Mario Kart 64 remake tracks in this game, this track has been barely changed visually. Really the only visual change is that there's now new advertisements and there's actually people in the stands opposed to just colored dots. Oh and yeah, the Piranha Plants have got an updated design. Possibly my favourite change in this version is that the Mario Star sign now says Mario Racing. And with that change, they put a Shine Sprite on the poster. Of course I love this change because Mario Kart 64 released before Mario Sunshine, so it's a cool way to keep this track somewhat relevant. Functionally, this track has been changed quite a bit, and they've actually altered most of the shortcuts. Like moving this mushroom a bit so you can cut through with a mushroom. This pretty lame cut in the original has been made significantly better with the addition of a ramp that you can trick off. And talking about tricks, you can now trick off the walls of the pipe. Oh and yeah, the pipe actually looks like a pipe this time around. And that's pretty much it. They did change the music a bit, but I've already done a comparison of the Raceway theme in my last video, and the music here is pretty much the same as the Mario Kart 7 version. So with that said, I guess that's it for the video. Wait, this track got remade in Mario Kart Tour? How did I not know that? I don't even think I played this version. Well, that might be an issue, but let's talk about it anyway. Anyway. So, this track has quite an overwhelming amount of changes, but I think I found them all. The first change we see as we enter the course is that this brick wall not only looks different, but now has advertisements on it. And oh yeah, I just noticed that the wall in Mario Kart Wii has a slightly different colour than the one in Mario Kart 64, if you care about that stuff. Because honestly, that fact is as interesting as the fact that the Mario Kart Tour version changed the Mario Kart Go pole. And along with that change, they moved the sign to be inbound instead of behind the wall. And oh yeah, I'll make sure not to forget to mention the fact that there's more trees at the start. A bit further on, you will notice that this mountain has been cut off. In its place is transparent walls that we saw in Tua's version of Luigi's Raceway. Also here we'll see the first two of many sirens scattered around this course. Then you'll notice that this giant advertisement has been split into three small advertisements. This part of the track is no longer a hill but instead a slant. They've also added arrows here and a rock near this shortcut. This turn has also been made more dramatic as it's now on a slant and has advertisements around it. Following that, the wall here has now been cut off and replaced by a rock. In this pipe section, there is now light and these stripes. They've also removed this Nintendo ad and replaced it with two small ads. And then we go to this grandstand which has quite a few changes. Like the removal of these flags, and they're bringing back the Mario Racing sign. Seriously? Yeah, this remake came out 21 years after Mario Sunshine, but that was a cool change. Well anyway, it was so close, but now onto the background, we'll see that they've added pipes here, and these mushroom things, as well as changing the clouds. And now finally, 20 minutes into this video, we go to this track's one functional change. That being the addition to Goombas in the warp pipe, and now you can only trick off these ramps in the warp pipe instead of anywhere on it. And I think that's all the changes in Mario Raceway. Hey, thank you for watching till the end of this video. So you might have noticed my lack of uploads, and that is because I have not the motivation nor time to do it at the moment. Oh and plus, the last video I uploaded, which I was making at the same time as this video, was one of the hardest videos I've ever edited. So if you made it this far in this video, I'm gonna beg you to please go and watch some of the weirdest NES ROM hacks, because that video was a nightmare to work on. But if you've already watched that video or just don't want to, well then don't worry, I will definitely be making some more videos in the future, and I actually know what my next two videos will be. The next video I'm gonna make, that is probably gonna be uploaded in like a month, knowing me, 
is going to be a let's play on one of the hardest sets of Mario levels ever. Yeah, you probably know what I'm talking about. And then after that, I'm going to be making two top fives, which are going to be confined into one huge top ten that I've actually been wanting to make since 2022. And this video is going to be huge, and I really hope it does well. And also, please go and watch the first part of this series if you haven't. Or just don't. But anyway, thanks for watching, hit that bell for notifications, and like this video if you want, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Uh, there has not been a Mario Kart 64 Flower Cup course in Mario Kart Tour since before February. Yes, I have been looking into every tour to try to get footage of one. All I'm gonna say is it better not be one in the next tour. Also, Mario Kart is 10 years old now, yes you really are that old.